Tesla is once again pushing the boundaries of electric vehicle charging infrastructure, this time with the introduction of the V4 charging cabinet, which marks a significant technological leap, promising to redefine the efficiency and speed of electric vehicle charging. Tesla's V4 power cabinet is a critical component of their supercharger network. The V4 cabinet sits between the utility power supply and the supercharger stalls. Its role is to convert and manage the electrical power from the grid into a form that's suitable for rapid charging of electric vehicles. This involves transforming utility AC power into the high voltage DC power that EVs require, ensuring that the power delivered to each supercharger is at the optimum level for fast charging vehicles. For instance, there could be different types of vehicles connected to the superchargers, such as the Cybertruck, which runs at 800 volts, and say a Model Y, which uses a 400 volt architecture. Tesla also now allows third party vehicles to connect to its charging stations, and all of these nodes could have many different variables that affect their charging speed, such as the state of charge of the battery, the internal temperature, and so forth. And so the new V4 cabinet is responsible for providing and allocating the power optimally to each charging post given the wide array of vehicle configurations that could be connected. Tesla now says that the Cybertruck can get up to 500 kilowatts of power. This is much higher than originally anticipated. Tesla hinted that Cybertruck would be able to take advantage of 350 kilowatt chargers, which it easily can, but it was assumed that 350 kilowatts would be the highest rating for V4 chargers. This move surprises competitors from both the charging side of things and the vehicle itself. The Tesla Semi was also expected to have 1 megawatt charging, but this is now officially 1.2 megawatts or 20% higher, not that the Semi has any real competitors. Other Tesla vehicles, the S, 3, X, and Y, will continue charging at 250 kilowatts. However, this new charging cabinet is still incredibly good news for S3, X, and Y, even if they're not getting a direct power increase with this update, due to the reason that the hardware in the vehicles only supports up to roughly 250 kilowatts with a 400 volt architecture. For one thing, going forward, Tesla will start rolling out V4 superchargers much faster, which increases the likelihood of pulling up to one of these more capable stations. The previous V3 cabinets were able to connect four superchargers in a single cabinet, but with V4 that number doubles to eight, which allows Tesla to roll out new sites and to expand sites much faster than before. They say that the cabinet itself has a lower footprint and reduced complexity, which will likely make it cheaper for Tesla to build, which could also lower the cost for customers at each station, and it's great for Tesla's bottom line and it will contribute to half as many items for Tesla to transport when putting up a new station, since they prefabricate the chargers in blocks of four. So they may still need two rows of chargers, but one less cabinet will be needed for each block of eight. The other thing that's very interesting for S3, X, and Y owners is that these new cabinets are way more powerful. Tesla says three times the power density. Now, this could be a little ambiguous as to which part of the system they're referring to in terms of power density. However, from the world of data centers, power density is the power that all of the devices connected to the cabinet have consumed. In this case, the cabinet is now powering eight superchargers instead of four. And so while the density has gone up three times, each individual supercharger would on average see a 50% boost in power. In other words, three times as much power but twice as many chargers is a 1.5 times increase per charger. So when pulling up to a busy charging station, typically the V3 cabinet infrastructure can't handle all of those superchargers being used simultaneously. There simply isn't enough power to go around. And so every charger gets throttled. Even if you pull up to a 250 kilowatt charger, you may only get 90 kilowatts max in the best case scenario if it's heavily used. But with V4 cabinets, this would increase by roughly 50% to 135 kilowatts in this particular case. Here's a more detailed example describing a V3 supercharger where all the stalls are used simultaneously. Supercharger stations operate at 480 volts for DC fast charging. 
However, the actual voltage from the city power grid could be higher or different depending on local infrastructure. Additionally, many utilities provide three-phase power at 480 volts or higher for industrial or large commercial applications. This is because three-phase power provides a more stable and higher power capacity, great for this high-speed EV charging use case. And the use of three-phase power allows for more efficient power distribution and reduces the size of the conductors needed for high current levels. Then we have the amperage, which can vary depending on the utility's capacity to deliver power. For V3 superchargers, the label says 465 amps max continuous current, but it seems to be rated at 425 amps. In this case, the calculation is using 430, and so we multiply 430 amps times 480 volts times 1.732, which is a magic number, the square root of 3, and represents the sum of the three phases of power. They're out of phase, so you don't get the full power at any given moment. So you wouldn't multiply by three, but instead the total increase of three phase power is the square root of three. And so the total is roughly 360 kilowatts, which is more than enough for any one charging post, but when you have all four at the same time, it's about 90 kilowatts per supercharger. With V4, Tesla has likely gotten a much better connection with the utility and the V4 supercharger is now rated at 615 amps, up from 425, and 1000 volts, up from 480. It also has a 100% duty cycle, which is the proportion of time during which a system is operating. A 100% duty cycle means the device can operate continuously without interruption or the need for cooling breaks. The reason Tesla can do this, especially with the increases in current and voltage, is that unlike traditional liquid cooling, the V4 charger employs immersion cooling, a method borrowed from high-performance computing and data centers designed to maintain optimal temperatures even under the stress of high power charging. Previously with V3, the coolant lines ran next to the high voltage conductors within the charging cable, but now Tesla fully immerses the conductors in the surrounding coolant, which is more efficient and contributes to allowing them to make the wires much smaller which cuts costs as well. But with this new engineered design, it actually enables for more amps to be pushed through the same physical space without overheating. Another difference between the V3 and V4 superchargers themselves is that the ingress protection or IP has changed in rating from IP66 to IP54. This actually seems to be more lenient in dust getting in and offers less protection against water. So V4 can handle rain and splashes, but not powerful water jets like V3 was able to. One reason for this is that Tesla didn't feel it was required to offer this extra protection, and it's generally cheaper not to have the IP66 enclosures that offer the higher level of dust and water protection. Now the V4 posts themselves have charging cables that are 3 feet longer and may help third-party vehicles which have non-traditional configurations as to where the charging port is located. The chargers themselves also have small screens on them, which may be a little bit silly. Up until now, there have been no screens on Tesla chargers because the screen inside the vehicle shows all of the information that's needed, and it adds an extra expense of having to get the materials, the glass, and install it into the charger, and then maintain it once it's deployed it's probably going to be the number one thing that breaks. Now, it may help to provide extra information, like the cost of the charger per kilowatt, like on this European charging stall, or it may help third-party vehicles better navigate using Tesla's charger, which is considered third-party for them. Additionally, the screen may be able to display additional information for others, as to perhaps show how much longer this vehicle will be charging for. But at the same time, it may also confuse people if the screen isn't working, they may think the charger is broken when it's indeed working, especially since the charging functionality at Tesla's chargers have proven to be extremely reliable and robust with over 99% uptime. Now it's interesting, with all this said and done, currently only the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi will truly be able to take full advantage of the new V4 superchargers. Tesla will likely need some special or better deal with the utilities in order to get enough power for the Semi's 1.2 megawatts. However, it's a great design to be able to use the same charger for any one of Tesla's vehicles, 
regardless of whether it's a large truck or a Model 3 sedan. Plus, this will future-proof for some time Tesla's upcoming new vehicles. Except that the CyberCab, which will likely be using an 800-volt architecture, won't have any charging ports at all and will use induction charging instead. It would be interesting if Tesla has some plans to support this type of charging at supercharger stations, leveraging the V4 superchargers and cabinets. In a world where all of Tesla's future vehicles will be autonomous, this will be critical. And it looks like based on Tesla's short video on induction charging that the CyberCab, which will have a small battery pack and an 800 volt architecture, won't need that much power for a quick charge. Not to mention that a lot of the time, while one CyberCab is charging, a different one that has just finished charging can be deployed. In the meantime, this V4 upgrade will be beneficial to all of Tesla's vehicles on the road today and will become even more important as Tesla continues to scale with Model 3 and Model Y, Cybertruck and Semi, and third-party cars. Faster charging means more throughput at the charging stations and it will also help to increase Tesla's revenue since they charge by kilowatt hours, not time, by pushing through and charging up as many vehicles as possible. Currently, the company is going through the permitting process now, and V4 supercharger cabinets could start being deployed in 2025, which will give Tesla an even more dominant position as it drives the entire electric vehicle industry forward. So with the Cybertruck capable of utilizing 500 kilowatt charging, how might this shape its appeal compared to other EV pickup trucks? And with V4 cabinets offering cutting edge capabilities, how should Tesla further leverage this advantage to maintain and expand its lead in EV charging? Don't forget to watch my last video on Xpeng's new humanoid robot that may or may not compete with Tesla's Optimus. Be sure to follow me on X at TMIO Tesla. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.